Hi, how you doing? Justin back again. Uh, in this lesson we're going to be checking out some voicings for some 2-5-1 sequences. That will be in the key of C, D minor, G7 and C major. Now I'm going to be using all sorts of extensions, so the D minor chord might be D minor, D minor 7, D minor 9, D minor 11 or D minor 13. The G chord, the G7 chord, might be G7, G9, G11, G13, but it could also be G altered, which is a 7 chord with a flat 5, sharp 5, flat 9 or sharp 9, as discussed in the last lesson when we looked at altered grips because the G7 is functioning because it's moving to the C major chord which could be C major, C major 7, C major 9, C major 11 or sharp 11 probably won't use those too much or C major 13 so we've got a whole load of different chords to choose from now and what's important is to understand a few nice ways to put them together and to think a little bit about a thing called voice leading now voice leading is the idea of a melody note being kind of either consistent through a chord sequence or moving through a chord sequence. Normally it's the top note and all of these examples I'm going to show you are going to have a bass note and three notes in the top part of the chord, maybe four but probably three. So I'll be using my thumb to play the bass notes and three fingers to pluck out the chord tones. So you might want to give that a go, it's a really common way of playing kind of jazz comping, um, i.e. kind of jazz rhythm. So um, without any more chat let's just get in and have a look at some nice ways of playing a 2-5-1 in the key of C. Here we go. Okay, we're going to start down here. Here would be our standard kind of 2 5 1 if we play D minor, G7, C. Obviously, it doesn't sound too jazzy, so we're going to start making some cooler chords up there for that very chord sequence. Now, the first one, one of my favorite ones, is this D minor 9 to a G13 chord to a C major 7 very simple, no altered harmony, and you can see that we've kept that E note on the top for each chord. Now if you want to start getting a bit altered, a really nice way of doing it would be D minor 9, G7 sharp 5, and then either back to C major 7, or going to a C major 9. So you can see now the movement's going and this is what I mean by voice leading, it's finding nice ways of go moving around like that. Now we could also, another really nice moving one in this sequence is to play D minor like this, D minor, uh, D minor 7 to G7 sharp 5 to C major 7 this time we're going up. D minor, G7 sharp 5, C major 7. So we can go down or up, each time using that 7 sharp 5. Now if we want to play a bigger, now I was playing D minor 9 like that, another really common way of playing a D minor 9 play this, it kind of sounds like an F major 7, but you could add that bass note in if you want, but often you just leave the bass note out, of course the bass note's there, we're just not playing it, that would be a D minor 9, then move that third finger back, there's the root note, but again we're not playing the root note, you could if you wanted to grip it over with your thumb I suppose, but this is now a G7 sharp 5 flat 9, and that moves lovely to C major 6 9. 3, 2, 2, 3, 3. So that one. Lovely little 2, 5, 1 that movement. I love, that's one of my personal favourites. So you can see there, just in that one position, we've now got a whole load of different choices. But we, there's more. We could play D minor like this. Move it to G7. Keeping that little F note on the top and then resolving it to the C major 7. We could go from a D minor 7 here to a G7, we've got the D as the top note, D minor 7, G7 flat 5 
and then we could either go back up to D, uh, C major 9 or we could go to say C6 so we're moving right the way down now we're going there's really lots and lots of different ways of dealing with this little sequence hopefully you're starting to get that idea of that now you could also say go D minor 9 here to a G7 flat 9 that's a really nice movement this is like a diminished chord looks like a diminished chord so you G7 flat 9 D minor 9 G7 flat 9 to maybe C major 13 3 nothing 4 5 5 lots of different choices that you've got here and all you have to do is just experiment with what way you might like to play it. Let me give you a few more in another common position. I'll, I'll stick in D. I have to move myself around a little bit here. So the first chord, this is a really common one. Here's a D minor 7 chord. 10, nothing, 10, 10, 10. And here's a G7 flat 9 moving to a C major 6 9. We could play C major 7 then, depends what you like. It's a really, really nice voicing. You could go D minor 11, G7 flat 9, C major 13. Oh, sorry. Get that right in a sec. Really nice little movement there for, for that one as well. You could start with a D minor 7, play G7, sharp 9, to a C major 7, it's a bit of a stretchy one that one, 8, nothing, 10, 9, 12. It's a nice movement. There's loads of them, there's, you know, you can really go to town with this stuff and there's so many different versions. Another couple of ones that I like personally here, this is a D minor 9. Of course, there's the root note. You can play the root note with your thumb if you wanted to. And now, if you drop this back, I like this one a lot, this chord. This is a G uh, 13 flat 5. Flat 9, sorry. G 13 flat 9. I'll get it right. Put it here, D minor 9. There's your G 13 flat 9. And then you could go to little, I don't know. C6-9 would be nice. Moving off the end of the neck there. We could go to C major 7 like that. I'm just showing you the grips, remember, but you, if you're comping, you'll be going... To fiddling about with the chords and playing them kind of rhythmically, but What's important here is that you're getting used to these idea of these different grips. That's really, really, really important that you understand the, the concept between how you might move between these little voicings. It's, it's very important and very cool. You might go here. This is a bit of a funny, stretchy one. This is a D minor 11, 12, 10, 8, 8. And you might jump there to a, a flat, the G7 flat 5, flat 9 then to a C major 9, that's quite a nice one as well. So this is just a 9, 9, 10, 10 with a C bass note. The trick here is experimenting, is finding your own ways of playing them, finding some good ones, writing it down when you come, like that one. I use that all the time, especially followed by A7. <laughs> Moving down the neck. About to fall off my chair. Well, I hope that's given you some brain food to get started off on. I keep trying to stress to you the importance of experimenting with this yourself because if you really want to get into the jazz thing, you have to learn to find new sounds on your own. It's a great thing to be transcribing as many chord solos as you can by the likes of Wes Montgomery and Joe Pass, Martin Taylor, you know, Jim Hall, it depends on who you like, I guess, and what sort of style of jazz you want to play. Um, but getting to grips with the kind of the sounds that they use is really important before you start transcribing. As you transcribe, you'll find lots of nice little movements, ways of joining the chords together that sound really cool. And don't be afraid to borrow stuff off other people as you're transcribing and learning their stuff. 
you know, that's where it all comes from. And as you transcribe one idea, you go, oh, that was really cool, but maybe I could do that to it, or how about I change it to do this? So it's really important that you kind of push yourself into that idea of finding new sounds yourself. Really, really important. Um, check out the website. I'll put some little tab uh, and maybe some chord boxes up there of these chords so you can follow through. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy that. I'll see you for some more jazz stuff sometime real soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.